Every thunderstorm has two very basic parts, the updraft and the downdraft. These two things in conjunction determine if a storm strengthening, weakening, tornadoes, are they possible, etc. We're going to talk about them. We're going to learn right after this. Now the updraft of a storm is basically the storm breathing in. It's that visible cumulonimbus cumulus cloud growing in the atmosphere. And the downdraft is the rain you see beginning to fall out of that storm. The updraft and the downdraft are the key components to a storm building, thriving, and dying. Most of the time, these two are not in balance all the time. The most cells, multi-cells, single cells, the updraft grows. They have a point of maturity where they're kind of in balance, but then the downdraft takes over, cuts off the inflow to the updraft. The updraft can no longer survive. But in supercells, which we're going to get into later, these things stay in balance a lot longer. Updrafts and downdrafts, though, these are the basic building blocks to every thunderstorm. Now, there's several other features you're going to want to be paying attention to. These are the basic features of storms. The updraft, it's going to grow. You're going to see that cloud growing, but then it's going to seem to top out, right? And as that tops out and you see that cloud begin spreading, it's spreading downwind with the jet stream winds at that level. That's the anvil. It resembles the anvil from Looney Tunes. Remember, you, you remember that, right? So this is called the anvil cloud. The area underneath that updraft where there's no rain, we classify that as the rain-free base. Most often when you're looking for severe weather, most severe storms are going to have some sort of a rain-free base. Rain-free base does not mean a supercell. Well, you'll, you'll learn about those in a little bit again. But a rain-free base is a good sign you've got some wind shear. So severe weather, definitely possible. Now, there's two other types of uh, clouds you can see underneath the updraft. One is the wall cloud. And the other one is a shelf cloud. How can you tell the difference? Well, we got a video, cards right there, that talks about these. But the wall cloud, look for it where the updraft and the downdraft meet. That's where it's most commonly going to be. And if, the, if you can see that there, that's probably a wall cloud. Shelf cloud, on the other hand, is going to be at the leading edge of a storm or wrapping around the back end. Uh, so that's a shelf cloud. Shelf clouds typically slant away from the precip. Wall clouds slant towards the precip. Just a little tip that, that that's how that works. So we'll, we'll, we'll dive into each of those a little bit more in a separate video. And another one, this is a fun one, Mematis. You see this all the time underneath the anvils of storms. Mematis doesn't really indicate anything. There's just some sinking air. But hey, at sunset, they look dang cool. Now, knowing a few of the basics now about how storms look, like some of the some of the features, a couple of ways you can tell, hey, is this cloud becoming a storm? Is it getting stronger? Well, here's a few tips for how you can tell that. The first one seems simple. It seems obvious, but it's easily missed. Is the storm growing? Is it getting bigger? Because if that cloud's growing in the atmosphere, if the base is getting wider, if the storm's just physically growing in size, the storm's getting stronger. Another one that I look for is is the storm's lightning increasing? That lightning can be an indicator that updraft's really getting a fresh, big time new push. The amount of times I've seen a tornado be like preceded by a massive barrage of lightning, immense. So that's a good sign too of is this storm increasing in intensity? Now, another one uh, that I look for is persistent upward motion into the updraft. Like, is that are, are you seeing those cloud tags? Are they uh, being sucked up into the storm? Because if they are, that's a good sign that the storm is still sucking in air. It's sucking in surface air. Because oftentimes you'll see storms that don't do that, that are still very powerful. That's because they're not really rooted in that surface layer. But when storms get rooted in that surface layer, you see that upward motion into the updraft. Also, for me, that's also a thing where I start thinking, hey, we can maybe see a tornado in a little bit. So that's a good sign to be keeping an eye on. Now that you know some of the basics of what makes up storms, you can now start thinking about storms in a more three-dimensional manner and how they move. That video is right there. Be sure to subscribe. Remember, weather's for everybody. We'll see you next time.